Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the Vanquish Trading Channel. Today I want to make a video going over my new PC build that I'm using for day trading and video editing. Now before I get started, I just want to say that this is not a PC review channel and I'm by no means a PC expert. I just did some research online and chose the parts that I think suited my needs the most. And I also wanted to keep it on a bit of a budget since obviously day trading doesn't really require you to have the most powerful PC out there. You can trade with even the most entry-level laptops in the market today. And even the trading platform that I use, Thinkorswim, is only a single core Java application, meaning it's not very demanding on your computer. Now with that being said, I do use a lot of custom scripts on there, and I usually have them loaded onto six charts at a time. So on my old setup, it could take anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds on a bad day for the charts to load. Which isn't the end of the world, but it was definitely a little bit frustrating when I was trying to trade in the mornings. And another thing that bothered me was I was not able to display real-time quotes without Thinkorswim basically becoming unusable. Again, not the end of the world, but it's definitely an option I would have liked to have. And any kind of multitasking while Thinkorswim was open was not going to happen. So upgrading was definitely needed, especially since I do a lot of multitasking for my business. And if you're curious, in terms of video editing, I'm currently using an older MacBook Pro. And to put it lightly, the last 4K video I uploaded to YouTube did not go smoothly. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle. So upgrading was definitely needed, especially since I do plan on uploading a lot more to YouTube from now on. And I'll also be recording some of this video on the new GoPro Hero 9 Black that came out last week. So I'm excited to see how that video quality turns out. If I don't like it, I have another camera recording as well, so we'll see. Okay, back to trading. So if you currently use Thinkorswim or are planning to slash interested in using it in the future, let's take a look at the recommended system requirements for it. Okay, so let's go to the TD Ameritrade website. And as you can see, there are two types of users according to them, the average user and the power user. And a power user is defined as, quote, those who watch multiple charts at once, use our custom scripting language, or perform complex technical analysis. All three of those directly define what I do with the platform, so I fall perfectly under the power user. If we go through this list here under PC, for operating system, they recommend Windows 10, which this build of course has. Uh, next, for processor, they recommend an Intel Core i7. Now, I personally went down the AMD route instead, and I'll explain why in a bit, but this build will cover this requirement as well. Next, for RAM, they recommend 16 gigabytes. My build will have double this at 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, storage, they require at least one gigabyte of free space, and they recommend an SSD. My build will use a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, but I don't think anybody will have any issues with this requirement. Display, I don't think that this requirement matters too much, to be honest, but if you're curious about what I'm using, I'll be using a 4K TV as my monitor, just my personal preference. Next, for video card, they recommend any dedicated video card, meaning graphics that aren't integrated into your CPU. I will be using an NVIDIA GeForce 1660 Super. And finally, for network, they only recommend 15 megabits per second. I personally have 200 from Comcast, so I'm all set there as well. And that rounds up the recommended PC requirements for a power Thinkorswim user. Okay, so now let's talk about the parts that I picked. If you've done any research on building your own PC recently, you'll know that the current PC market is a little crazy. A lot of the most desirable parts are either out of stock or at a ridiculous markup over MSRP. Even some of the less desirable parts are marked up. So I definitely gave it a fair amount of thought when picking the parts that I did. With that being said, everything you see here was purchased at my local micro center. This isn't sponsored or anything, I paid for everything you see here myself, but when compared to other popular sites like Amazon and Newegg, I definitely got a really good deal. Anyways, I'll have a full list of the parts as well as the prices that I paid below in the description. So let's start with the CPU. I chose to go with the Ryzen 7 3700X. It's an 8-core processor with 16 threads. It has a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz and overclocking up to 4.4 GHz, and it fits into any AM4 socket motherboards, which I'll talk more about in a second. But overall, this is just a really good CPU for the money. It actually has twice the amount of threads as the similarly priced and specced Intel Core i7, which should give it better performance overall. And since the new Zen 3 AMD chips are being announced right around the corner, I was able to pick this up at what I thought was a very fair price. And it also comes included with the Wraith Prism CPU cooler, which is a nice bonus. Now, I just mentioned that this fits into any AM4 socket motherboard. And that was appealing to me because I was able to pick the motherboard that I wanted, this B550 here, and essentially make this build future-proof. And what I mean by that is, AMD has said that their new upcoming Zen 3 processors will also use the AM4 socket. 
the socket that the B550 motherboard has, as well as the X570 motherboards. Meaning that if I wanted, I could upgrade my processor to the new chips and keep the motherboard and everything else the same, which I really liked. And I picked this CPU up for $280. So let's talk about the motherboard now. For the motherboard, I picked the ASRock B550M Steel Legend. I found this to be a very good budget motherboard, again with the AM4 socket, as well as good heat sinks and all the ports and headers that I need. I also think it looks pretty cool aesthetically, which is just a nice bonus to have as well. Uh, Micro Center was having a deal where you save $20 on CPU motherboard combos, so I picked the motherboard up for $125 after the savings, meaning that the total for my CPU and motherboard came in just about $400 for both. Next, for the memory, I went with the G-Skill Ripjaws 32GB of DDR4-3200 RAM. And so these are two 16GB sticks that cost me $105. Thinkorswim can be very demanding of your system memory if you allow it to, and so I wanted enough RAM to keep Thinkorswim running smoothly, while also leaving room for general multitasking that I'll be doing while it's open. Just basics like web browsing and other applications like Photoshop. And if you remember, Thinkorswim recommends 16 gigabytes of RAM for their power users, so we have double that here. Next, for the graphics card, I went with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super. This particular card made by MSI. This was the part of the build that I had to give the most thought towards. Admittedly, this graphics card is a bit on the low side of minimum requirements for 4K video editing, but I think I should still be able to get it done. Again, this is a bit of a budget build, even though this card cost me $240, but if I find that the graphics card is limiting me a bit, I'll just upgrade that in the future. The same goes for the RAM, which I can easily upgrade if needed. But this card has good overall performance, and NVIDIA's GeForce experience allows for a lot of cool features when it comes to recording videos and streaming. So if I do upgrade this, it will most likely be a higher-end NVIDIA graphics card. Next, for my storage, I went with the 256GB Inland Premium M.2 SSD. Not much to say here, I purchased this for $38, I uh, felt that this gave good performance per dollar, and I really didn't need much storage space. I definitely don't plan on using a lot of space on this computer, and I'll probably end up putting video recordings on an external hard drive, uh, just because I've always tried to keep my computer storage as clean as possible, I've just always been that way, so no need for me to get an SSD with a ton more storage. Next, for the power supply, I went with the 650 watt, 80 plus bronze rated from EVGA. This may be a bit overkill for this current setup, but it's nice to have in case I make a couple of small upgrades in the future. At the very least, you should probably go for at least an 80 plus bronze rated PSU, and I went with a familiar brand with good readings, and I paid $100 for it. And finally, the case. This is the Lian Li Lancool 2 Mesh. This particular one is the RGB variant, and there is a performance model as well. But we all know that RGB gives 10 times the performance anyway, so obviously I had to get RGB. Uh, one thing I did add, however, was an extra 120 millimeter fan that you see on top of the case there. This is the Arctic P12, a good quality fan that I picked up for $9, and I'll use this as an exhaust on the back of the case. If you decide to go with the performance model, the case already comes with a 120mm fan in the rear and also two 140mm fans in the front, whereas this RGB variant just has three 120mm fans in the front. So just something to consider if you decide to go with this case as well. But I ultimately went with this case because it's pretty highly regarded in terms of airflow and cooling performance, which is the most important thing for me right now in terms of cases and I was able to pick this up for $90, which I thought was a very fair price for the performance it gives. It has a nice tempered glass side panel to show off your build. It also has removable back panels on the other side to hide all your cable management. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose to go with tempered glass on the back panel as well. I'm not sure if it had anything to do with cooling, but I probably would have just left a metal back in there instead, but obviously no big deal. All right guys, that rounds up all the parts that I picked for this build. The total cost, including the extra 120 millimeter fan, came out to $987, so just under a thousand. Now, if you decide to go with a similar build yourself and you don't plan on doing any video editing or streaming, I think you could definitely get away with a lesser priced graphics card. There are some great budget graphics cards you could pick up for less than $100, which will bring down the total cost of the build quite a bit. Uh, and you could also save a bit of money on some of the other parts I picked as well but you get the point. You can build it any way you like it to suit your own needs. But if you want to optimize your build according to Thinkorswim's power user settings, 
Uh, the basics would be either Ryzen 7 or Intel Core i7, um, 16 gigabytes of RAM at least, and a dedicated graphics card. All right, I think that's enough talking for now. Let's build it. All right, everybody, so it is the next day. I finished setting everything up last night, installed Windows, updated everything, installed all necessary drivers. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that my cable management was on point. I definitely need to get back in there and fix that. I just wanted to get everything up and running and set up so I could finish up this video. But it is my first time building a PC, so you gotta cut me some slack there. But other than that, very happy with this build. Everything runs fast and smoothly as it should. Again, this isn't a PC review channel, so I'm not gonna show you any benchmarks or anything. I don't even know how to run that stuff to be honest, but I will tell you that Thinkorswim runs insanely fast now. No more lag, I can finally display real-time quote speed, and charts load up instantly when I'm looking through them in the morning. Also, I don't have them on at the moment, but I was able to load all of my custom scripts on every single chart, and the computer handled it no problem. So final thoughts. Overall, like I said, very happy with this current setup, and it's worlds apart from my last PC. Some things I may change in the future, like I said before, I may end up upgrading the graphics card if I find that it's limiting my editing performance, but we'll see tonight when I edit this video. Another thing I may change is the case. Even though it's great performance-wise and it's everything that I need in terms of that, it is a little bit bigger than I would have wanted, and I may end up going with another case by Lee and Lee that aesthetically I like a lot more. Um, but if I do end up going that route, I would probably also upgrade to an AIO for CPU cooling but we'll see. All right, well, that does it for this video. Uh, if you guys liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. A lot more trading videos to come if you're interested in that. And I'll also keep you all updated on if I upgrade this PC in the future, as well as any other tech slash lifestyle videos that I see fit. If you have any questions or recommendations for videos you wanna see me make, leave a comment below or send me a DM on Instagram. All of my socials will be in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about my company, Vanquish Trading, the details for that will be in the description as well. I'll see you in the next one.